The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Attorney General, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. So as Walter said, you have a reputation of having the highest integrity, utmost solid judgment. So when people heard what went down in Phoenix, a lot of people were like, I mean, friends, supporters, backers were saying, what on earth was she thinking talking to Bill Clinton? So what on earth <laughs> were you thinking? What happened? Well, I think that's the question of the day, isn't it? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, and I think that's a perfectly reasonable question. I think that's the question that is called uh, you know, by what happened in Phoenix because people have also wondered and raised questions about my role in the ultimate resolution of matters involving the investigation into the State Department emails. And to the extent that people have questions about that, about my role in that, certainly my meeting with him raises questions and concerns. And so, believe me, I completely get that question. Uh, and, and I think it is the question of the day. Mm -hmm. But I think the issue is, again, what is my role in how that matter is going to be resolved? And so let me be clear on how that is going to be resolved. I've gotten that question a lot also mm -hmm. over time, and we usually don't go into those deliberations, but I do think it's important that people see what that process is like. Um, as I've always indicated, the matter is being handled by career agents and investigators uh, with the Department of Justice. They've had it since the beginning. Uh, they are independent. Which predates, your, which predates your tenure as it, Attorney General. It predates my tenure as Attorney General. It is the same team, uh, and they are acting independently. They follow the law. They follow the facts. That team will make findings. That is to say, they will, make, they will come up with a chronology of what happened, the factual scenario. They will make recommendations as to how to resolve what those facts lead to. Um, those, the, the recommendations will be reviewed by career supervisors in the Department of Justice and in the FBI and by the FBI director. Uh, and then, as is the common process, they present it to me and I fully expect to accept their recommendations. Now, what's interesting here is you say you, fu you fully expect to accept the recommendations. One thing people were saying this morning when the news, when the news broke was that you were, quote, recusing yourself from mm -hmm. having any kind of role in the final determination. Is that the case? Is that what you're saying? Well, a recusal would mean that I wouldn't even be briefed on what the findings were mm -hmm. or what the, the actions going forward would be. Um, and while I don't have a role in those findings, in coming up with those findings or making those recommendations as to how to go forward, I'll be briefed on it and I will be accept accepting their recommendations. And when you say, you Again, this must be the journalist in me and the linguist in me. <laughs> Accepting to me means, here, Madam Attorney General, here are our findings. And you completely accept them wholeheartedly and then issue them to the public? Or you accept them, look them over, and then make your own determination as to what the final determination will be? No, the final determination as to how to proceed will be contained within the recommendations and the report in whatever format the team puts it together, that has not been resolved, uh, whatever report they provide to me. There will be a review of their investigation, there will be a review of what they have found and determined to have happened and occurred, and there will be their determinations as to how they feel that the case should proceed. And when you say there will be a review, this is, you mean the review will be done by you once you, are, once you accept <laughs> The recommendations and determinations, or well, you're understand. talking about the process of the review I'm talking, getting to that I'm talking to about that the point. initial process Got of it. how this case will be resolved. This case will be resolved by the team that's been working on it from the beginning. Supervisors always review matters. Mm -hmm. In this case, that review will be career people in the Department of Justice, um, and all also, the FBI will review it up to and including the FBI director, mm -hmm. uh, and that will be the finalization of not just the factual findings, but the next steps in this matter. And I find it interesting, several times now you've made a point of saying career prosecutors, mm -hmm. career officials within the Justice Department. Why, why are you making that very hard distinction, that you know, description? And I think a lot of the questions that I've gotten over the, over the past several months, frankly, about my role in this investigation and what it would likely be um, was um, a question or a concern about whether someone who was a political appointee would be involved in deciding how to investigate a matter or what something meant 
or how should the case proceed going forward? Mm -hmm. um, and as I've always said, uh, that this matter would be handled by the career people who are independent. Uh, they live th from administration to administration. Their role is to follow the facts and follow the law and make a determination as to what happened and what those next steps mm -hmm. should be. Um, but you know, in my role as Attorney General, there are cases that come up to me. I am informed of them from time to time. This case, as you know, has generated a lot of attention. Um, I'll be informed of those findings as opposed to never reading them or never seeing them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will be accepting their recommendations and their plan for going forward. So the New York Times reported this morning that the Justice Department, Justice Department officials said back in April that what you're talking about right now was already being considered. And so the question is, before President Clinton boarded your plane in Arizona, had you already made the determination that what you're announcing today was indeed what you were going to do? Yes, I had already determined that that would be the process. Uh, and in large part is because, as, you, as, as, as I'm sure you know, uh, as a journalist, I do get this question a lot. Uh, and as I've said on occasions as to why we don't talk about ongoing investigations in terms of what's being discussed and who's being interviewed, is to preserve the integrity of that investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, we also typically don't talk about the process by which we make decisions, and I provided that response too. Uh, but in this situation, um, you know, because I did have that meeting, it has raised concerns, I feel. And I feel that while I can certainly say this matter is going to be handled like any other, as it has always been, it's going to be resolved like any other, as it was always going to be, I think people need the information about exactly how that resolution will come about in order to know what that means and really accept that and have faith in the ultimate decision of the Department of Justice. So back to my first question, the what were you thinking question. <laughs> but let me put a different spin on it and ask, when you're, you're on your plane, now from what I, having been in Washington a while and knowing how the protocol works, you land, folks get off, you get off for all, sorts of, for all sorts of reasons, but it's very fast. You're on your plane, and in walks the former president of the United States. What were you thinking at that moment? <laughs> Well, as I've said, um, you know, he said hello, and we, we basically said hello, and I congratulated him on his grandchildren, as people tend to do, and that <laughs> led to a conversation about those, those grandchildren, who do sound great, um, and, uh, uh, and that led to a conversation uh, about his travels, and he told me what he had been uh, doing in Phoenix and, and various things. Um, and then we spoke about, you know, former Attorney General Janet Reno, um, but it really was um, a social meeting, and it was, uh, it was, it really was in that regard. He spoke to me, spoke to my husband uh, for some time on the plane, and then we moved on. Uh, and as I've said before, though, I do think that no matter how I viewed it, I understand how people view it. And I think that because of that, and because of the fact that it has now cast a shadow over how this case may be perceived, no matter how it's resolved, it's important to talk about how it will be resolved. Mm -hmm. It's important to make it clear that that meeting with President Clinton does not have a bearing on how this matter is going to be reviewed, resolved, and accepted by me. Mm -hmm. Because that is the question that it raises. Mm -hmm. So again, no matter how I viewed it, how I viewed the meeting, I think what's important to me is how do people view the Department of Justice because of that meeting? Mm -hmm. How do people view the team that's working on this case and has from the beginning because of that meeting? How do people view the work that we do every day on behalf of the American people, which we strive to do with integrity and independence? So that's the question for me, and that's why I felt it was important mm -hmm. to talk about what impact that meeting would have on the case, mm -hmm. which it won't. But in order to explain that, we have to talk about how it will be resolved. Now, you've known President Clinton for a long time. He's the one who uh, nominated you and appointed you to a U.S. attorney for the Eastern District in 1999. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering, do you have, so you have, a you have a relationship is what I'm trying to get to in terms of just long-standing long professional relationship. So you would be well within your right to say, um, Get off my plane. What are you doing here? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you regret not telling the former president of the United States to leave the premises? So, 
Well, look, as I've said, you know, just because I may have viewed it in a certain light, but the issue is how does it impact the work that I do and the work that the Department of Justice does? And I, was, I certainly wouldn't do it again. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, because I think it has cast this shadow over what it should not, over what it will not touch. And that's why, as I said, I think it's important to talk about how this matter will be resolved and how, it, how the review and how the determinations and decisions will be made. You know, I can say, as I have said, it's going to be handled by career people and then we can make an announcement as to what it is, but unless people have some insight into that process, you know, it's, they're not going to be able to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing for me as the Attorney General is the integrity of this Department of Justice. Uh, and the fact that the meeting that I had is now casting a shadow over how people are going to view that work is something that I take seriously and deeply and painfully. And so I think it's important to provide as much information as we can so that people can have a full view of how we do our work and why we do our work and how this, how this case is going to be resolved as well as how all the cases that we look at are going to be resolved. And so, of course, what's happened as a result of this, there are people out there in the world who are saying, see, this is an example of the system that's rigged against um, the rest of us. Mm. And you just said that, it, that this whole incident has been painful, is one of, the, one, of the words, one of the words you use. What would you say to the American people who, might, who believe that, yes, indeed, this is an example of Washington rigged against them? You know, I think that people have um, a whole host of reasons to have questions about how we in government do our business and how we handle business and how we handle matters. Um, and I think that, again, I understand that my meeting on the plane with former President Clinton could give them another reason to have questions and concerns also. And that is something that, and that's where I find, that's why I said it's painful to me, because the integrity of the Department of Justice is important. And what I would say to people is to look at the work that we do. Look at the matters that we work on every day, whether they involve a high-profile matter or a matter where you've never heard of the person. Um, look at the victims that we deal with every day. Look at the people that we protect every day, because that's our mission. Um, and to the extent that this issue has overshadowed that mission, yes, that's painful mm -hmm. to me. Um, and so I think it's important that we provide as much information as we can so people can have faith and confidence in the work of the department and the work of the people who carry on this work every day. And last question on this. So when might we expect your acceptance of these findings and determinations? <laughs> Are we looking at weeks, months, days? Well, so in terms of timing, I actually don't know that because again, I'm, I don't have that insight into, uh, into the, I'd say, the nuts and bolts uh, of the investigation at this point in time. They're working on it. They're working on it very hard. They're working on it to make sure that they're as thorough as they can be, uh, that they've covered every angle, that they've looked at every issue. Um, they're doing the work that the people in the Department of Justice do every single day. And I could not be more proud of that work, and I could not be more proud to present that work to the American people when this matter is resolved and we can let people know the conclusion to this investigation. Moving on. <laughs> so.